Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It is the 18th of October. My apologies for being disorientated for time on the last video. Of course, it's October. Now, we're looking at official data here from the United Kingdom, and it's not entirely consistent. Let me give you an example here. So the Office for National Statistics, very reputable national organisation, paid for by the government, says 6.4% uh, of over 12s are completely unvaccinated. 6.4% have had zero doses of vaccine over the age of 12 for the whole UK population. The United Kingdom Health Security Agency, government body paid for by the government, says that 17.5% of over 18s are unvaccinated. Now, given that there's a lower vaccine uptake between the ages of 12 and 18, we would expect that 6.4% and 17.5% figure to be even greater, the difference to be even greater. So one saying 6.4, one saying 7.5, 17.5. What's going on here? This represents millions of people. Different. It looks like one government agency is singing uh, Rock of Ages and the other government agency is singing Amazing Grace, when I would have thought... They should really be singing off the same hymn sheet. As always, of course, we've got the uh, evidence to come. But at the moment, this looks like we can either uh, go by the official data or alternatively, we can go by the official data. Nice to have a choice. Let, let, let's look at this. And of course, this is saying nothing about the efficacy or otherwise of vaccines. We're not commenting on that in this video because we have to be consistent, of course, with uh, community guidelines. So this is purely about data collection. But of course, if you're working on the wrong data, your stats are going to be to pot, aren't they? So it looks like the Office for National Statistics are including people that are unvaccinated in the vaccinated group. And of course, people that are unvaccinated could well, for example, have some natural immunity, which could be confusing the issue. So it's been making a bit of a mockery of the whole thing, actually. But let, let, let's, uh, let, let's look at it in detail because I don't want to... Prattle, I want to give you evidence. Now, the first line of evidence comes from here. This is the Office for National Statistics uh, official site, and this is the data I'm going to be uh, using here. So that's straight from their site. And as always, of course, I give you the links. You can check on this to make sure I'm not making this up or indeed misinterpreting it. Um, now, this is Source UK Government uh, Coronavirus Dashboard, so it looks pretty official, doesn't it? And here's their figures. 93.6 uh, had received a first dose of vaccine, 88.2 uh, a second and 70.02 uh, a third dose. And what that means is 6.4% uh, of over 12s are totally uh, unvaccinated. So that's just 93.6, uh, 6.4. Um, that, that's where we get that from, totally unvaccinated. So that's according to that data, pretty clear. But now we move on to the... Uh, weekly report from the office for sorry from the uk health security agency which we see here and i'm not going to pan all the way down but if we go down to page 74 of this report um we find out that um the figure is a uh, significantly uh signif very significantly in statistical terms different um <clears throat> weekly national influenza covid19 surveillance report page 74 a cumulative data, cumulative data up to week 40 of 2022, weekend in the 9th of October. So, <clears throat> so it's all up to date, all up to date current data. Vaccine uptakes here, 82.5% uh, for the first dose over 18s. Uh, 79 point, no, sorry, 79.7 for the second and 65.8 for the third. So we see these are very different figures. So, um, Health Security Agency, 17.5% uh, of over 18s are totally unvaccinated. Uh, ONS data, 6.4% of over 12s are totally unvaccinated. Now, given that vax, I've written this down so I don't get it the wrong way around. Given that the vaccination rates are lower in 12 to 18s as compared to over 18s, and they are, we would expect the percentage of unvaccinated and over 12s to be higher. So the discrepancy is even greater than it would appear to be. Um, so it's, it's a major discrepancy. Now, I'm going to give evidence for that, evidence for vaccine rates being low between 12 and 18, because we can't just say that. We have to prove that these figures are even worse than they appear. 
And, and here's the data from the Office for National Statistics. Um, now, these are the figures for, uh, so that's, you won't be able to read this, but it's uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds, and that's 12 to 15, and that's 16 to 17. And we can see that these are all below the UK Health Security Agency uh, average of 82.5, uh, and uh, certainly well below the ONS average of 93.6%. Uh, so that's clear evidence that the vaccination rates are lower in the uh, under 12s, meaning these figures are even further out than this is indicating. So a discrepancy of millions of people here. This really is a um, <clears throat> problem. Now, um, this paper now I'm going to look at here is uh, from, now this is a preprint here, um, but um, it's from uh, Norman uh, Fenton, who is a very well-known, uh, very highly esteemed uh, UK-based um, mathematician and uh, professor uh, for the understanding and uh, application of risks. I think he gives uh, evidence to um, for forensic things on on risk and things like that. So um, very, very reputable, well-known professor in the uh, in the UK. Um, and this is his paper here where he unpicks this a little more than I have done. Anyway, um, October, so published in October, actually published, uh, just published in the last few days, I think. So this is all, all bang up to date information. There's nothing, there's nothing out of date here and it is October. <laughs> I'll just remind myself. Now, um, most recent vaccine mortality surveillance uh, report from the UK Office for National Statistics estimated that just over 8% of adults, that's over 18s, were unvaccinated by the end of May 2022. Now, um, I'm somewhat limited in the data I can get from the Office for National Statistics because I kind of get it from this uh, nice, uh, easily uh, digestible format that they publish and is very easy to uh, understand. Uh, of course, uh, statisticians can go back to the original uh, data sources. Because if you click on if you click on here, you can actually get the uh, that probably won't work, but you can actually get the spreadsheet, so you can actually uh, go back and reanalyze the uh, the data if you're a, a clever statistician, as Professor Fenton certainly is, um, and I'm not, um, but that's okay. We can use this paper. So here we have it. Um, so it estimates just uh, eight percent of adults in England were unvaccinated by the end of May 2022. However, based on Office of National Statistics estimates are based on a special subset of the English population. Now, the paper does discuss what these subsets are, but it's based on subsets of the English population. Now, this, to be quite honest, is a bit mystifying. We're talking about the Office for National Statistics here. We're talking about a huge budget. And um, the first thing, I mean, I've taught basic research courses and done this sort of thing. The first thing you ever teach on taking a sample is the sample must be representative of the entire population you want to consider. So can someone explain to me how the Office for National Statistics is taking its data from some subsets of the population, not the whole population? You know, th th this, this is Statistics 101. This is really basic stuff. It would appear um, they're not getting um, quite right. Um, but they're the Office for National Statistics. Anyway, um, subsets of the population. Other independent estimates for the whole, popu for the whole population uh, in May were higher. So the UK Health Security Agency ran about 20%. And again, he's going from the, uh, the source data here. While an independent survey by ICM found 26%. Wow, 26% totally unvaccinated. Now, that is a huge, that's a huge uh, difference. Now, that is from here. Now, I'm not saying this is accurate. I'm just saying this is what, sorry, I've put um, ECM. It's I I ICM. Um, ICM, this polling agency, you can download the whole data set there um, or you can get various presays from it if you go on the website. Uh, don't know what um, don't know what ICM stands for, actually, but um, if you actually look at them, they, they, they seem to. It's not working. Is it working to work? Anyway, no, never mind. They seem to be specialists in this sort of social uh, social polling uh, data. And they say 26 percent. So staggering difference there and um, I am assured that they are very good pollsters this is a well-conducted poll and yet much more discrepancy than you would expect 
Assuming the ONS, uh, the ONS data is accurate based on its subset for the English population, and I think, to be fair, we can assume that. Um, and the other independent estimates of between 20 and 26% are also accurate for the whole population, are also correct. And again, we know these are well-conducted studies, and of course the UK Health Security Agency which is, is actually based on the actual numbers, so that they should be bang on. Uh, then Professor Fenton goes on between 69 and 99.6% of adults missing from the Office of National Statistics sample were unvaccinated. Uh, now, this is a big, very big uh, difference. A very big difference. How can we compare, not that people compare vaccinated and unvaccinated very much, but how we, can, we, can we compare if we don't even know how big the relevant groups are and if we're counting people that are vaccinated as being uh, unvaccinated? Um, I don't see how the data, the, the, the results can be accurate from that. Again, I stress we're not saying that the vaccines are not efficacious. We're not saying anything about the vaccines. We're just pointing out the difficulty in this data analysis. <clears throat> this would mean Office of National Statistics sample is unrepresentative of the whole English population in any and any conclusion about vaccine uptake efficacy. Safety based on the RNS data may, may not be relevant to the population as a whole. So we're not saying vaccines aren't safe. We're not saying they're not effective. We're just saying there's a deficiency in how this data can be represented. If the Office of National Statistics is not underestimating the population or vaccinated in its sample, so if the Office of National Statistics is not underestimating the proportion, if they've got it right, um, then this is the conclusion from the paper, then we have shown that the sample is so unrepresentative of any whole population that any inferences made about the vaccine programme using the ONS data are uh, worthless, pretty strong word. So that was from the view from that paper by uh, that paper from um, <coughs> Professor Fenton there and we look forward to that being uh, peer reviewed so we can look at it uh, further. Um, I, I've, I've read it of course, um, it's, it sounds good but to tell you the truth I don't pretend to fully understand all the, um, the mathematics in it but um, I don't imagine there's any basic errors of uh, arithmetic in there. So I think it's a, to me, everything seems to hang together. And it seems to be a reasonably good paper. Well, a very good paper. Um, pointing out things other people have not pointed out. Now, just to clarify, um, YouTube guidelines. Um, we can't give content that promotes preve uh, prevention methods that contradict local health authority or WHO. I don't think we've done that because we've gone by local authorities and we're not commenting on vaccine safety um, vaccine efficacy or ingredients of the vaccine we're purely commenting on the inconsistent some might say highly inconsistent some might say inexplicably inconsistent UK data so um, we'll leave that there for now time someone got their act together maybe they could meet for talks imagine yeah, that'd be a good idea they could meet for talks um someone from the ons could talk to someone from the uk health security agency just a thought thank you for watching